In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to build the Clicker app using CloudDB. Here I've already got the template loaded, and the first thing that I want to do is to rename it so that I don't ruin the template. So I'm going to come up here and do a Save As. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of non-visible components to our app. Specifically, we're going to use a notifier, uh, mostly for debugging purposes. And if we go into the experimental drawer, we can find the cloud DB that we're going to be using for this app. Now, over here for the cloud DB, I just want to call your attention to two things, the project ID and the token. Uh, later on in the enhancements, you're going to be asked to build a teacher version of this, and you want to make sure that these two are exactly the same for both the student and the teacher. That way the uh, two apps will be able to share data. The easiest way to do that is to first finish building the student app and then do a save as and save it as uh, the teacher and then change it there uh, which will allow you to have identical information for all these fields for both apps. Okay, let's move on to the designer, uh, the block section and we can see we're starting with a clean slate. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create some global variables and the two that we're going to use in this app are to hold uh, the number of agrees and the number of disagrees. These are going to be the two variables that we're going to try to keep in sync with uh, the database. Later on, when we build the teacher version of the app, we're going to also introduce a third variable to hold the questions, but we're not going to need that right now. Now, if we go back for a second to our user interface, we see we have a reset button here. And once that reset button is pressed, we're going to zero out the counts in both the agree and disagree fields. So let's just go ahead now and build a event handler to handle the reset button. So when the reset button is pressed, we're going to zero out our local variables and then we have to call this procedure, which I have not written yet, to take these updated values and store them in the CloudDB database. Let's go ahead and put that procedure together right now. Okay, so we're going to call on the store value command in the cloud DB, and we're going to use the simple tags agree and disagree, and we're going to store our variables whenever we need to store the database uh, values to the database. That pretty much completes the building of the reset button. Let's uh, build another procedure now to retrieve data. Whenever data changes in the database, the database automatically informs our app by uh, activating the data changed event. And what we're going to do in this uh, event handler is we're going to look to see whether it was the agree data or the disagree data that changed. And if we match on that data, we're going to update our local variable with whatever the database gave us. Uh, we're going to take one additional precaution and make sure that we have a valid number here. Uh, if we don't have a number, what we're going to do is we're going to set our local variable to some safe value like this. And now we're going to do the identical thing for the disagree tag. Okay, here we have our update display procedure, and what happens here is we're just going to take whatever values are stored in our local variables, and we're going to write them to the labels on the display. Now, if we go back to our designer here again, we want to handle the cases where the user presses either the agree button or the disagree button. So let's code those two button handlers now. When the button agree is pressed, we want to increment the value of our local variable, and we want to update the database with the new value. And of course, we want to do the exact same thing when the disagree button is pressed. And now we have both of our button agree and button disagree handlers. A couple of other things we want to take care of now. Uh, in case there's some, some sort of a reported error from the database, we want to be able to display that on the screen. So to do that, we're going to look at a one additional uh, event handler. We're going to code this cloud DB error event handler block, and we're going to use our notifier block to take whatever message is handed to us by the event handler for the error message and just display it right on the screen for the user to see. Now in our app, there's one more situation that we need to take care of. We've built this data change block uh, that will allow us to update our data whenever something changes in the database. But we also need to take care of the situation when the app first initializes that we need to sync ourselves with whatever is stored in the database. 
Now, certain databases uh, automatically trigger this data change block whenever the app first initializes. But at the time that this tutorial was built, CloudDB did not have this feature. So we're going to manually have to do a fetch from the CloudDB database when the app first initializes. Let's look at some code to do that. First of all, we want to look at the screen initialize block. Okay, so inside this screen initialize block, we're going to call this new procedure called get DB values. Let's look at what that would look like. Here in the get DB values, we're just going to do a manual fetch from the database. We're going to set off a get value for the agree field and another get value for the disagree value. Now, uh, when these values get fetched, instead of having the data changed event trigger, the uh, database is going to trigger a diff different event called got value. So this is the event handler for the got value. The only time this is going to get triggered in our app is when the app first initializes. And what we want to do inside here is we want to do the exact same things that are done in the data change block. In other words, we want to take this code and we want to replicate it. Now I could just duplicate this code and put it here, but that would be rather sloppy. So let's refactor a little bit and take all this code here and put it into a procedure. Let's call that procedure got data like that. And now let's take this code, we'll replicate this block here, and we'll call it twice. And then we'll take this code that we have over here and we'll put that inside this new got data procedure that we're going to define. So here I've refactored. I took the code that was previously inside the data changed event and I've separated it into its own procedure called got data. And now I'm calling that procedure from two different event handlers from the data changed event handler, which is triggered anytime data changes in the database, and also from the got value, which is triggered when the app first initializes. Here, I check to see what data has been returned by the database, and then I update my display to show the new values. Let's run our app now, which is finished, and see if it's working. Here we are running the app on two different devices. If I press the Agree button on one device, you can see that it syncs up with the other device. Likewise, if I press the Disagree button on the first device, you can see the two devices always stay in sync. 